ಹಾಗಾದ್ರೆ Okay, so this is... Oh, I should turn this off. Yeah, we don't want to look at you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think so. This is the fourth and final episode of the Springfield Reports. Oh. And this one's pretty short. Oh. Uh, d- and depending on how much we talk, it's pretty short. Oh. Um, uh, let's see here. Where can I... I have it somewhere. I have it, ri- I have it written down somewhere. Who all's on? Oh, yeah, on this one, we interview Matt Stern again from Bachman. So he's on twice. Yeah, he was on last show, and now he's on this show. And I don't understand. I'm very confused because he came up to the booth and said, he said something to the effect about he'd like to be interviewed on the podcast. (laughs) Okay. But, Tom, apparently you had interviewed him the day before. Yeah, I did. Did you identify as another podcast or something? <sighs> the jigs up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I've been moonlighting. No, you know what it is? You know what it is? I we Well, that's why we're asking. We don't have business cards. Ooh. Oh. Okay. And I would... did I I did identify myself. I mean, I had my I had my AML polo on. Right. So we need we need AML microphone flashes. Mm, yeah. yeah, there you go. <laughs> and I guess I need a I need a fedora with a little uh, press thing stuck in the hat. There you go. It says scoop on it. Yeah. Attention, Mister and Missus America, and all the ships at sea. We're com- um. Anyway. So, so on this one, so I don't know what happened there, but uh, anyway, he's <laughs> getting double airtime. He was on right. the last one. They, and they he- should be. They should be grateful. What we should do is have some sort of a scoring system because in the last show you interviewed him and on this show I interviewed him and then we can let people rate which interview they like the best. Ooh. Ooh, that would be fun. We can throw a poll up on the fans page. Well, it'd be fun for the person that was popular, but it wouldn't be fun for the other guy. Well, they're all gonna they're all gonna say you anyway, so what does it matter? Oh, I don't know. You're well, interview- I wouldn't say I don't know about that, Tom. Oh, okay. What would you say, Scooter? I would listen to them and judge them equally. I mean, you know, fairly. And then I would tell you who the winner was. Right. And then, like, if you decided you never wanted to be on the podcast again, you'd say... You I, like- would say <laughs> I would say it was Tom. <laughs> and since I enjoy being on the podcast, I would probably vote for you, Lionel. <laughs> that would be a wise move on your part. <laughs> See? <laughs> See, the whole system is rigged. Yeah, it whole, is. Just whole, say. Yeah, the whole system hey, is completely It's his rigged. podcast. I- <laughs> What happened with, uh, you were interviewing the guys from Four County Society of Model Engineers? Yeah. I forget the fellow's name. Oh, unfortunately, I do, too, because I didn't write anything down. But something happened where I, the, I bumped the, the unit or whatever, and it went on pause. Oh. oh <laughs> so I had, yeah, so I had, to, I had to stop it and then start another segment. Oh, okay. Wow. That, that's what happened. And that was the only... That was the only one of of the the interviews that I did, and I did about ten or eleven, if I remember right, all in. Um, and that was the only one where I had any uh, technical difficulties. I think. Yeah, the worst problem I ever had with that thing, and I to to, my, to I just have no idea why. But there's a clip when you stick the cable into the microphone. There's a little clip; it clips and hangs on. Mm-hmm. But, but when you stick the other end of the cable into the recorder. There's no clip to hold it on, and a couple of times over the years, I've looked down and and one of the cables has come out from the recorder. <laughs> yeah, I did notice that there's no there's no like lock no. mechanism on it. I find that we to need be re- to tell somebody. Well, I don't know. There's got to be some sort of audio reason for it or something. I don't know why, but I find that to be very peculiar. That is weird. Um. But it was a good interview. These uh, so if you go to their website, the Ford County Society of Mo- it's F as in four, C as in county, S in society, 
M is in model and E is in engineers. That uh, that that's their website. Um, it's really kind of a cool modular layout. It's actually one. It of the, is. It's actually one of the coolest I've seen. I mean, those guys that had the road show, the operations road show, they had a beautiful layout. Is it still going, Bruce? Uh, not on the road anymore. It's residing in uh, is it in a fry tag's basement. In a whose basement? Is it uh, is it David Freitag? Uh, I'm trying to remember the the one's name. The uh, he came up and visited your layout one time and operated with us. Uh, but I think it's in his base, and we went there a couple times. We did. But their last go last go on the road was a couple three years ago. But it still exists. The layout still exists. Yeah, the layout still exists, but they just don't take it on the road anymore because it was a high quality layout as well. Oh, it was indeed. Yes. And this this uh, four county society of model engineers, it's a really high end layout that they've got. Yeah, their their um, their approach is is really well done. Like with the way that they have the, the spotlights on the different scenes, and then they have the the rope around. So you know, it, it's just really they they put a lot of. I mean, the the modeling and the scenery is is top notch. I mean, it's it's what you would see. It's this is probably not going to come out of my mouth right, but sometimes when you have modular layouts, and this is just my opinion, your mileage may vary, um, sometimes when you have modular layouts, because they're designed to be modular and portable and movable, um, they're, they're constructed in such a way where maybe they're not as detailed as like a permanent home layout can be. They're built to withstand the the stress and strain of being you know connected disconnected moved from place to place right um but the the four county group their their scenery you know and everything is is very highly detailed it's it's as intricate and and craftsman like as you'll see like on a on a a permanent home layout so i don't know exactly you know how they're moving all this stuff without you know damaging it extensively but um no their their whole setup is is really uh top notch and the one thing that caught my eye on their homepage is they have a picture of the the whole you know somebody's up on a scissor lift or something and they've got a picture of the gang and the whole layout and it has a it's just not just you know four sides and four corners down the one side it kind of takes a bit of a turn like it's it's not just a, a, a linear layout yep there's a lot of thought put into the overall look of the thing yeah and they have they have a fair amount or they have several modules that it's not flat right from a vertical standpoint where a lot of modular layouts the the scenery is flat or you know the elevations are are somewhat limited i mean they have some pretty deep scenes vertically where the scenery like you know like bridge and river scenes where the um you know where the scenery drops down below the the grade of the railroad and things like that so um you know they've had to do some some engineering with stuff like that but you know all again all uh top notch uh, very well executed now while i was looking at their particular website and this is not a knock against them this is a knock against me or anybody else that Running, doing uh, uh, social media and running a website is hard work. Mm. It's a lot harder work than people realize. Yeah, it's continuous. It's continuous, and you have to stay at it because just because I was looking at their particular website, and it's a good website, and there's lots of information on it. But, like, you go to photo galleries, and their photo galleries are from 2003. Their newest one is from 2003 like 20 years old. <laughs> I'm thinking. And they probably hadn't even thought about that. Yeah. Like, like in a, you know, inadvertently, somebody was, you know, because I think what happens in clubs is, or even on podcasts, you get excited. You're going to do a, every month, you're going to do a video about the, all the pictures that were on the fans the last month. And as the months go by, it seems great for the first six months. And then it starts to seem like, Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. That's tough. It is. And it's like I you know, I notice that with all 
having a website is is uh having a website doing social media like trying to stay up with it the it problem is tough. yeah the problem is it's like anything you're really really excited at the start you know like getting married at the at the first it seems great <laughs> and then you go wow why did i do this <laughs> now i got too much work to do <laughs> God. Whoa! <laughs> you don't let your wife listen to this, do you? Yeah. Well, she not. Heck, I'm still doing cabinets, dude. Well, she knows that your like your your attitude about your marriage is why am I doing this? Well, why am I doing the cabinets? <laughs> <laughs> but then that goes to say, right? <laughs> <laughs> bless you? his heart. <laughs> yeah, bless his heart. <laughs> Mm. Uh, yeah, how's your son-in-law doing? Your your late your new son-in-law? How's he doing? He's, he's doing good. What is he like? He, how long have they been married? Like two years now? Yeah, uh, almost. Yeah, right at a little over two years. Yeah, yeah. This is it's still the easy part. Yeah, it's still easy for <laughs> them. Yeah, they just had their first kid, so they're on that uphill. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's all exciting. Uh, yeah. Now, uh, Tom, do you think that the the guys, the Four County uh, Society of Model Engineers, do you think they have any Rapido trains? You are fast track to model railroading fun. Rapido trains, you're fast track to model railroading fun. I'm sure they do. I'd be surprised if they didn't. I'd be surprised if they didn't either. It's one of the it's one of the premier manufacturers of model railroad products throughout the world with offices in Markham, Ontario and somewhere in Great Britain. There. Yeah, Cause with a traveling layout, the last thing you want is a locomotive that won't run. So you would have, you would have to have some. Yeah. You got to have some Rapido trains. Your fast track to model road running fun. If it's N, if it's H-O, the fast track is Rapido. Oh, that was good. <laughs> <laughs> and then after that, uh, uh, let's see. I have I have it all the all the notes written down here. <laughs> I bet you do. I do. Well, it's okay. We talked about Matt Stern from Bachman because you interviewed him and I interviewed him. Uh, Queso interviewed him on Saturday and I interviewed him on Sunday. Nice guy and a model railroader too. That's what we should make or make that. That was like the first, one of the first questions I asked. I figure he was just like some sort of corporate pinhead that was coming over to get some get on a podcast, you know. To, to, you know. I'm the I'm the only corporate pinhead in this group. <laughs> oh, yeah. I think he really just oh, wanted group, some yeah. stickers. I was thinking of Kevin. He's a, he's a corporate too. Yeah, he's a corporate pinhead too. Um, okay. uh, but yeah, I figured that's what he was, and then it turned out he's like an avid model railroader. So Matt Stern from mm-hmm. Bachman, if you ever have any. Any uh, dealings with Matt Stern from Bachman? You're you're talking to the right guy because he's an avid model railroader. Did did uh, anything in the Bachman booth stand out to you? Um. Oh God, that, uh, it it was a little while ago, <clears throat> and my memory's not what it used to be. I mean, they had they actually had a lot of products. I mean, Walters had a lot of products when I interviewed them, but in in talking to to Matt, um. You know, I was actually surprised at the the volume of, you know, stuff that was, you know, maybe a little bit higher end, um, you know, because everybody thinks of Bachman, maybe not everybody, but, uh, you know, a common perception of Bachman is they're the they're the train set people, right? They're entry, they're entry, entry level. Entry right, level. right. Yeah. They're the they're the place you go, you know, when you go to the department store and you want to start. You know, you want to get a train set for your kid or whatever, which is what I did. That's how I got into the hobby, um, <clears throat> you know, and, and I think that's that's kind of the 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 perception or the stigma, whatever you want to call it, that they've had. But really, they've they've done a lot of higher end stuff. I mean, they've had their their spectrum line for a number of years. Um, you know, they've got their. uh you know, they've got uh, a fair number of things with, you know, DCC and, and sound already, um, already equipped. So yeah, they've, they've really, uh, they've really upped their game compared to, you know, the idea of them being, you know, an entry level or a beginner sort of, uh, sort of, uh, 
avenue into the hobby. I just looked at the timer. We've been talking for 15 minutes already. Holy mm. macro. I can't get over that. How fast the time goes by when you're having a conversation. And we happen to be recording this on the same night that the Toronto Maple Leafs are beating the Philadelphia Flyers in Philadelphia. Uh, oh, boy. Yeah. I don't know we what this is. We still have a better mascot. That is, uh, <laughs> that is the weirdest, ugliest uh, mascot in, in the history of professional sports. It makes no sense. It makes total sense. <laughs> <laughs> if you if you if you, if you know anything about Philadelphia, gritty makes perfect, perfect sense. sense. Yep. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, uh. Oh boy. Oh, and it's twelve fifty one to go in the first period. And they're up, uh, and the Leafs are up one nothing. Okay. Okay. Thank so you. They're, still, they're still beating them, right? <laughs> thank you. Well, yeah. Okay. That is that is an accurate fact. But well, there you go. And the other fact yet. is, gritty sucks. Pretty's awesome. <laughs> yeah, he, he looks like the animal off the Muppet Show in the, in the bad representation of him. Yeah, yeah, he looks like a cheap ripoff of, uh, of someone oh, from the. Yeah. What yeah. I like is what I like is he's got those googly eyes. Googly and, eyes, and when who's ever whoever is in this suit somehow manages to get the googly eyes going in opposite directions, that's just awesome. Oh, so it's not even real. There's somebody in a suit. <laughs> Oh, oh man! Burst I just my told bubble. I just told I just told Lionel there's no Santa Claus. Yeah. Oh boy. Um, According to you, yeah, so he didn't he didn't believe in the thing anyhow, so it doesn't matter. Um, and I don't need and need any more updates because I'm recording it, so I don't need. Oh, I'm sorry. So you're 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 saying that them beating the Flyers was just aspirational, not? Oh no, it was obvious fact that you know. You know, the sun it rises. It was transparent. It wasn't accurate. Yeah, the sun rises in the <laughs> east and sets in the west. Okay. You know. Uh, it's it's like, uh, I don't know. It's like betting against the uh, seven-time uh, boss, uh, New England Patriots or something. The other thing I remember Matt talking about was they were trying to uh, – they were building an – is it a, the Acela train? He was talking to me about that, that they're building a model of that, but the, it is kind of, they're building it at the same time. It's actually being produced in real life, something along those lines. We'll have to have to listen to the interview to hear it. And the other thing is that Bachman is reintroducing their GE 44 tonner. Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. They're redoing it, I guess. They're retooling it and everything. Like they're starting from scratch. I was amazed at how many announcements they have it's like they do they said how many a month do they do it's a lot i do know that i think they they have something every week yeah that's what it was i was watching this other show that they were oh. talking about that oh, oh you were watching yeah. another show yeah i do that oh, the ken pa ken pa ken the dude patterson yeah i was watching that well you can't go wrong with ken the yeah. dude no no um, yeah, it's a good one uh, let's see uh, with all the gang, with the gang. <laughs> yep. Uh, it's pretty funny, actually. Mm. It's interesting. <laughs> it's interesting. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. It's, I, so I guess their they're 44-tonner is 399 dollars. Wow. Holy moly. That's with sound of DCC, though, right? Well, sure. Is it brass? No, no, it's just plastic. I can't. Huh. I guess I shouldn't say anything. I just bought a three wood a couple of days ago that was two hundred and seventy nine dollars. So pretty much the same Brought thing. What a three what? wood? Oh, a three wood. A okay. three wood. A fairway wood. A golf club. Okay. Yes. I guess between the driver and the the year old three wood, I spent about eight hundred bucks. So there you go. But well, they both. Go. But they but they both work. That's the thing that gets to me about the hobby is people complaining about the prices. You buy a locomotive for four hundred dollars, you're gonna have that thing forever and ever and ever. Like it's gonna yep. work for the next twenty years, right? And and good luck going to a Leaf game for less than four hundred dollars. Yeah, and that and that wood you just bought won't be doing you too good in ten years. There'll be a better one. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's what they keep telling you. So they keep yeah. buying them. Yeah, yeah, they make new ones every year. Yeah, new but, and improved with DCC and sound. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, you know what's changed in buying golf clubs, and of course, I haven't bought any for 
got going on 10. They're more expensive? Well, that too. Uh, I don't know if they're that much more expensive. They were pretty yeah. expensive 10 years ago. I, but I don't think I've bought a golf club in 12, 15 years. And, wow. Uh, well, I haven't played golf in 10 Well, I've or bought a lot of golf clubs over the years. Yeah, but I haven't played golf in 10 or 12. I haven't either. I never play golf. <laughs> so why are you buying golf clubs? Well, my daughter was on a golf. My daughter <laughs> was look, on a golf team so. <laughs> to look good when he's yeah. out of the green. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, no, I know they're oh, wheeling and dealing. He's, when he's wheeling golf. and dealing on the golf course, yeah. yeah, that's where you make the deals. <laughs> he just stands there with a club. <laughs> I had one pair of ping golf clubs, and my son-in-law got them because yeah. I never used them because my yeah. daughter is a big-time golfer. Is she? she yeah, she she's big time into it. Okay, well that's cool. Do you, do you wear those? Do you wear those funny shorts? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you can get. Why not? I do the whole bit. You don't even the play the whole loudmouth get up. Yeah, yeah. That's a, there's a whole thing called loudmouth. Our buddy oh, Bill yeah. Dewar, who belongs Bill to Bill Dewar, yes, he's big into the loudmouth. Yeah. What is, what club does he belong to? That the Delaware. Uh, he's the, the, uh, the York, uh, regional model railroaders, York regional model, or the York, the York model railroaders. But then they used to be, they're in the same club. Aren't they still in that same building? That was, the, there was two model railroad clubs. In yeah, the same I think building. the Delaware and the Delaware and Rutland or something was in there as well as them. But, uh, they just had an open house there a couple of weeks ago. Oh, did they? Huh. They did. How'd that go? I don't know. I didn't go. Oh. I may go to the one in the fall. All right. You and I should go together. There we go. You can buy lunch. All right. Um, I'm walking with a cane now, too, so we're going to look really good. Did you get the hurry cane? The what cane? The hurry cane? The hurry cane? What's that? That's a, a brand name of cane. That's what I have. I don't know. I got a cane cane. I got a cane one. cane. Yeah, it's a nice one. But uh, I I walk. Oh, here's hot, here's uh, shorts with hot dogs with hot dogs on them from the Loudmouth Company. There you go. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> mm. and, I, and I wonder how many people at Loudmouth Golf have Rapido trains. You're fast track to model railroading fun. If it's A, if it's H O, the fast track is Rapido. Let's finish up this segment, and then we'll talk about who else you talk to, and when we're doing the outro, because we've already killed. Uh, 23 minutes. We discovered Perfect. that we discovered that uh, Scooter buys golf clubs, even though he doesn't play. And, uh, how, how is your, is your daughter still playing? Oh yeah. That's yeah. She plays routinely. Okay. Was she on the golf team at school? Yep. And she also got a scholarship to college for that. Well, there you go. Oh, did she really? Yeah. Well, she was that good. Yeah. Well, does your son-in-law play? He does now. <laughs> <laughs> Is he any good? Oh, I, I, uh, I, I think I, he's. I think he hangs with her. I think. I bet you. I know how that conversation went when they first met, and uh, you know he was attracted to your daughter in the very, very early beginnings, and she said something about, oh, "I like. I play golf. I'm on the golf team, and I, I really love the sport." And he goes. Hadn't touched a club in his life. And he goes, me too. <laughs> and then he comes begging me for golf club. Hey, where can I get some golf clubs real quick? <laughs> where can I learn to be a five handicap in two weeks? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, there's a guy, there's a guy in the alley downtown. He'll, he'll say, <laughs> yeah, he'll fix you right up. But no, that's funny. Uh, okay. So that's it. We're going to stop this particular segment because we've already talked for 20 25 minutes now and we haven't even covered who else uh who else uh the queso cowboy talked to and we still got to talk about um tom stock so we'll call it a day are you ready uh kelly yeah i'm ready okay go for it subway chimes go <laughs> could you do it without <laughs> letting out a big sigh afterwards Oh, that's sorry. <laughs> he goes. He goes. I'm excited. That was excitement. Subway, Subway yeah. chimes go. Yeah. That was yeah. Exciting. That always sounds exciting. He does it like this. Subway chimes go. <sighs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, so that sounds to me like he doesn't want to do it anymore. I know. He sounds like he's fed <laughs> he, up doing he's, it. He's, he's just he's had enough. Says I don't like this. I don't want to do it anymore. So 
I guess you can always <laughs> grant him his wish. Yeah. You can always let somebody else start doing it because it seems to be nothing but a problem for him. Yeah, where's where's yeah. Brad when you need him? <laughs> yeah, he was supposed to be here, but he never he was yeah, a no show. He's his par- he uh posted that his uh parents needed uh electrical work done and he had I guess because he's a famous uh physics teacher, he can handle that stuff. <laughs> so why isn't he uh, with us? Because he's fixing their lights. I guess so in their all of a sudden now his parents is, are more important than us. <laughs> That's going to be good. Go figure. Yeah, wow. girl, yeah. But at least he set his clocks in the right direction. Yeah, hey, exactly. I was I was here early. There you go. All right, Kelly, you want to try again? Yeah, I can do it again. Okay, go. Subway chimes, go. Okay, here we go. So I'm here with Jay Voigt from the Four County Society of Model Engineers. Jay, tell me a little bit about this uh, spectacular modular layout that I'm looking at here. Well, what we have here to show this this year is about half of the layout. Okay. Um, it's been put together by about 40 different people okay. in our club. Um, our scenery is based on the summer of 55. Okay. So all our scenery and buildings and everything are that time period. So we can do both steam and diesel in the time period. Uh, but you're more than welcome to run any type of equipment on it as, okay. as you want. Uh, it's all modular. Um, we never set it up the same twice. It's okay. always a different layout. Right. And I see it goes off on... Some angles and things usually modular. When people think of modular layouts, they think of you know a rectangle with four corners. I see you've definitely got some reverse curves and things like that here. So how do you how do you manage all that with with keeping everything you know connected and interchangeable? And well, we have a very set standard at the end of each module what you have to be, where the tracks have to be, where all the nuts and bolts to put it together. Okay. Um, so it all matches up. And like I say, it's interchangeable. We can move these modules to any location on the layout. Mm-hmm. Um, and we designed the curves that we have. Hold on, I messed it up. Harder than that. Um, Hold on, guys. Hold on, he messed me up. <laughs> so any of the any of the modulars are modules are, are inter- interchangeable with any others elsewhere as long as they're they're consistent with those standards on the on the ends yes when we set up um and we usually set up three or four times a year um it's a different layout each time Mm -hmm. Uh, like i say here at this show we have about half of the layout with us um and we've designed it a couple of curves to put in to make it look more realistic okay i mean that's one of the things we try to do make it look as realistic as possible right and well, and certainly the, the scenery is, is very realistic, and, and uh, the greenery, the different textures and everything is just, is just fantastic. Let me ask you about the different scenes on the layout. Sure. Are these prototype-based? Are these based on particular locations, or is it really whatever the individual member wants to do? Um, whatever the individual member wants to do. Uh, however, uh, everything is based on Hagerstown, Maryland, and within 50 miles. That's okay. the country style that we want, and the type of buildings and the, the cities and stuff. That's to stay in that era, in that okay. area. Um, but like I say, I mean, each individual member can design their own. Some of them are based on, like the module right here behind me, it's based on Pointer Rocks, Maryland. Okay. Uh, that's exactly what the... Very famous location. Yes. Um, but like I say, most of it are freelanced. I mean, they're just whatever the uh, individual wants to do. So, so with the with the scenery and everything you mentioned, it, it's consistent. So, do people are do people use consistent materials, or is it? Uh, well, yes, we do. Um, all the trees uh, on the layout are from Scenic Express. Okay. Uh, that's all the trees, and there are thousands and thousands of trees on this right. layout. A lot of work went into that. Um, but the colors and everything, like I say, we, we model the summer of 1955. Okay. So that's what we want. We want the green. We want the right. the coloring to be that. Yep, summer foliage. So when did, when did this club begin? How long have you been doing this? Um, the club's been around since the 70s. 
Okay. 1970. Uh, it started as a permanent layout in Mount Airy, Maryland, and then we lost our space. Okay. And then we came up with modular design. Um, and like I say, we've grown from there. So just about 50 years, the club's been Correct. in business and, and has been running trains. So, and I'm assuming everything is, is DCC? Everything's DCC. Uh, we use the NCE system. Okay. Uh, and we're tickled pink with that. We love that system. Uh, it makes things very easy. Uh, we have uh, members, um, children, run on the layout at times. I mean, I'm talking seven, eight-year-olds running on the layout, and it, they, they wow. do fantastic. Well, DCC does does make it easier, you know, certainly oh. to have multiple trains running, and it's yes. easy to pick up. I also like your approach to lighting the scenes with, with the desk lamps. That's one thing I think, personally, that sets us apart from a lot of other clubs. Uh, most modular units, they operate from the inside of the layout. Mm -hmm. We have backdrops on ours all the way around. So with the lights, it draws your attention to the layout, to that particular location, the lights right. do. It really makes it bright. Um, and like I say, we operate from the front of the layout, not from the back. Uh, you can, if you really wanted to, do that, but we don't recommend it. Um, but like I say, I think the lights really make things stand out above all the other clubs. Yeah. It really adds a lot to it. I think another thing I'm noticing, too, is... You have a lot of vertical scenery. Yes. And scenery, you know, obviously above grade, but also below grade. Yes. You know, where you, you think of some other modulars, it's basically just a, a flat surface with, with scenery on top. You, It looks like you, I see a lot of cuts and fills and bridges and things like that. So. Yes, we, we call it negative scenery. And, and like I say, we do a good bit of it. Uh, we think it adds a little bit of realism to the layout. So, like I say, when you're looking at it, it looks real. Um, the track is level. It's all on one level. I mean, mm -hmm. there's no deviation in that. But the negative scenery plus the positive scenery just makes it look you, you so get much... The, you get the illusion of, of grades and things yes. like that. Now, um, with, with, oper with operating it, you know, obviously you're doing a lot of you know, just running train, you know, running laps with the trains... Can you operate this more prototypically if you wanted to? Do you, ever, we, do you ever operate with locals or switching or things like that? Or um, At some of the shows, we have a couple members who love switching, which I'm one of them. I love to do switching. And we have some modules that are built basically for switching. Um, so we can do it. Uh, generally, at the shows, we're just running trains. Mm -hmm. that's, that's what people want to see. They don't want to see someone standing there basically... They want to see big trains. They want to see right. nice long trains. Right. They want to see, and them that's what going. we try to provide. Um, but we can operate. We do have, you know, sidings. Uh, and and if a member wants to, you know, he can. They do can some do switching. it. They can do it. So if if somebody um, wanted to know where you're going to be next, or or you know wanted to learn more, do you have a website or a Facebook presence? We or? do have a um, a website. It's www. Uh, fcsme.org fcsme.org correct uh, our next show is actually next weekend at Timonium in Maryland okay that's um, the first weekend in February yes and uh, we'll probably be much larger at that show than what we are here okay um, we generally set up three times a year um, and we usually have a Christmas display at a local mall in our area okay and you, where are you based out of uh, basically central Maryland uh, our home headquarters is Mount Airy, Maryland. That's okay. where we get the four corners because four different counties in Maryland come together ah. in Mount Airy. And in Mount Airy, the b &O runs right through Mount Airy. Oh, okay. Or should I say runs underneath of it. Um, so that's, you know, basically where we're bench, central Maryland. Uh, we have members from uh, all four counties. We have members in Pennsylvania. We have... Uh, some in Virginia, uh, some in Southern Maryland, St. Mary's County. Uh, so we generally have about 45 members. 45, and they all just converge whenever you're having a show? Whenever they, we're having a show. Do they bring the modules? Yes. Or do you, okay, so everybody's responsible for transporting their own? and Correct. Um, and believe it or not, most of them stay in travel trailers throughout the year. Like when we tear down, we put it in a travel trailer, and it'll stay there till the next mm -hmm. show. And you don't find a lot of, of damage or issues or anything with that? Uh, with there's, there's some issues. I mean, weathering. I mean, it's you know, hot, cold, or mm -hmm. 
Um, you got to be careful with the electrical connections and everything. But right. for the most part, uh, we use um, clip-on um, electrical connections. Everything just clips together. Um, so, you know, every once in a while we have to do some repair work. Right. But for the majority of the time, they sit in trailers and they come out looking the way they are. Connect it all up, turn it on, and it runs like a top. For the most part, For yes. the most part, right. <laughs> Every once in a while we have glitches. We had one this morning where we had one section that was short and found where the short was and it was easy to fix. Um, since it's very modular, it's... It's easy to isolate, isolate troubleshoot. It, troubleshoot it, fix it. And like I say, usually... If we have a major problem, an hour or two is most takes right. to fix it. Right. Well, again, I mean, I've seen I've seen the layout at a number of shows and everything throughout the years, and I'm always impressed with the scenery and the level of detailing and really beautiful, beautiful work here. So, thank you, Jay. Thank you very much uh, for your time again. That website is fcsme.org. dot org. dot org. Okay, great. Thank you so much for your sure time. Thing. We really appreciate it. Enjoy the rest of the show. I certainly will. All right, I'm here with Matt Stern from Bachman Trains. I know a lot of us probably got our start in the hobby with Bachman Trains. Um, I know uh, I sure did. Uh, bought a, a Bachman train set uh, for my son many years ago when he was little and we wanted to get into the hobby. But Matt, tell me what's new at Bachman. Yeah, so we uh, have a few brand new announcements at this show. Um, typically, our Amherst show um, is right around the time that we announce our 2024 or our next year catalog. Um, and uh, this show, we actually have some samples for our uh, new catalog releases. Uh, so we have uh, a couple of new train sets joining the line. We have a uh, Ringling Brothers and Barnum and Bailey train set called the Circus Spectacular. Um, that one's a great one to get the kids started in the hobby. It comes in the Ringling Brothers' new vibrant colors. They just started touring again with the Circus last year. Um, they have a totally new look now, and this train set is... Uh, Kind of uh, just uh, based on that look and uh, celebrating their relaunch. Um, right. It for uh, the more serious modeler, um, you've got the uh, in train sets. You've got the ON30 East Broadtop passenger set. Okay. Uh, we have brought out a freight set a few years ago, which did pretty well, um, and we now have a passenger set uh, with cars painted and numbered to uh, replicate the cars that are running now in the uh, in the heritage operation. Right. Right. With with the the East Broadtop, you know, coming back to life and and doing so in a big way. I'm sure there's. There's a, a bunch of modelers out there that that are you know have a high degree of interest in in modeling that now, so that's great. Exactly, yeah. And I see here you've got uh, looks like you've got an elf on the shelf train. We do, yeah. We announced this at our uh, NMRA show announcements of the summer. Um, this is our first sample for the elf on the shelf. Uh, we'll have uh, photos going up online at some point, I'm sure. Uh, the set comes with our uh, standard 060 steam locomotive with the short haul tender. Uh, it's got a gondola with a. Uh, Miniature Elf on the Shelf figure in it. He's not quite HO scale, but he rides in the gondola. Uh, we got a boxcar and then a bobber caboose at the end. And it's a it's a really fun holiday set. Another one that it's a, it's a great introductory set for kids getting into right. the hobby. So, but you have to move it every night, right? Well, so you've got to run the train every night. I mean, I hear <laughs> parents all the time are, are going into a panic because they forgot to move the elf. Right. Well, this this is a, this is a miniature elf, so this, the same rules might not apply to this one. Okay. Okay. Well, good to know. So, so you've got some, some new N-Scale offerings here as yeah. well? Yeah, so we have, uh, these have been announced for a little while, uh, but we have samples here of our uh, ALC 42 chargers. These are expected to arrive later this year. Um, we've got the uh, the Phase 6 version, which was the first version we also released in HO. These Along are Amtrak with, engines. These are Amtrak engines, correct, yep. We've got the uh, Amtrak Day 1 in the uh, Heritage scheme, and then we've got two Phase 7 versions, which is the uh, the new Amtrak scheme that they're unveiling now. We also have, uh, in our brand new releases for uh, N-Scale, we have some uh, new GP40s. We've got a sound-equipped uh, CSX Bright Future YN2. In, um, in N-Scale? In N-Scale, yep. Oh, wow. Okay. We also have uh, a, a B&O and a Canadian National with uh, Grand Trunk lettering um, in uh, the uh, standard DC line. Okay. And uh, we also have, uh, the first, this is the first time our new samples of our uh, totally newly tooled SD40-2 have been displayed. Uh, we had an SD40-2 in the N-Scale line many years ago. Um, when we were looking to bring one back to the line, we looked at that, and it just did not cut, cut it for modern standards, so we built a, a new one up from the ground up, and uh, that's what we have here. It's uh, available in CSX, Norfolk Southern, Santa Fe, and Union Pacific. 
Um, Some comes, more modern era. Yeah, modeling. about 19, mid 1980s to today is probably about the eras that you'd be looking at for these. Right. Um, they have uh, sound value on board. Uh, that's uh, soundtracks Economy. Okay. And uh, they've got a few different details for era specific details. The CSX and the Norfolk Southern come with uh, non functional but uh, ditch lights uh, manufactured on them, and uh, the uh, Santa Fe and the Union Pacific don't because they're from the slightly earlier era. Right. Um, and this is uh, hopefully going to start a new line of SD40s in this scale. Okay. So talk to me about train sets. Okay. Do people still buy train sets? Absolutely. Yeah, train sets are the entry into the hobby for so many people. Um, I know that's the way I got started. That's the way I think you, you said you got started. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, what we do at Bachman is we try and cater to every level of modeler. So, you know, you, you have this wonderfully detailed high-end stuff, but somebody getting into the hobby isn't going to necessarily jump right in with that. We, right. Everybody needs to start somewhere. And that's why right. we think that the train set line is still so important to maintain. So we have it sets in HO scale, N scale, O and 30 scale, and even in large scale. Mm -hmm. So with that, where, where, are you, where are you selling? Because I, you know, I think of most people when they're looking for a train set, they're getting started in the hobby, or at least when, when I did, you know, I went to the toy department of a department store or to a toy store, and now, you know, places like Toys R Us have, have you know, kind of fallen by the wayside. And, you know, so where, are people just buying online, or are they going to the hobby shop to buy a set? Or, you know, where, where, does that, where do you see that happening from a, from a business standpoint, I guess I'd ask? Yeah, it's mostly online, as, as, you, as everything is these days. Right, right. Um, but there, there are still some places you can pick up our train sets, um, I know Hobby Lobby sells mm -hmm. a, a few of our sets. Um, you won't get our full line, but you'll get at least a, a sampling of them. Um, hobby shops, like you said, that's another great place. A lot of hobby shops do carry a good amount of our line. Um, and they're also a great place to go for uh, resources and information when you're starting out in the hobby. You know, sure. They'll help you out with you know, what, what's a good introductory product to get, what's uh, a good complimentary item to get. So hobby shops, that, that's probably my recommendation if you're going to be starting out is to buy from a hobby shop. Right. Uh, but online is, is probably where you're going to be able to find the best selection of our stuff. Okay. And, uh, you know, I see you've got, you know, you've, I'm looking here, you've got a little bit of everything. You've got freight cars from different eras. You've got, you know, diesel locomotives from different eras. And, and what, it, it, you know, for our audience out there, what, what, what's the number one thing you want people to know about Bachman trains? I think the number one thing is Bachman trains isn't tra just train sets. We, uh, you know, we're known as the train set manufacturer, and it's a very important part of our line because we want people to get into the hobby in order to get to a place where they can buy the higher-end stuff. But we also have the higher-end stuff. We have our line of Siemens products, uh, the ALC42 Charger, the SC44, and the um, ACS64 electric locomotive. Those are you know, fantastic function-filled DCC locomotives. Mm -hmm. um, they're based exactly on the prototypes. Um, we actually worked with Siemens. They provided all the uh, material for us to base the model off of. And uh, we've got other ones like our Hudson. Um, our HO scale Hudson is another fantastic locomotive. Um, it's got a, a ton of separately applied detail. Um, and again, in these uh, actually both these and the chargers come with TCS Wow Sound, which is really incredible sound quality. And mm -hmm. it offers a lot of different functionality. So you're using, you, you work with a couple different decoder manufacturers for sound. I, I, I think I heard you say you work with Soundtracks for the, the economy in some and then TCS for some of the others? That's right, yeah. It, 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 it depends on what the locomotive is and, you know, which company offers the most appropriate sounds for them. Right, right. Well, wow sound is, is great when it comes to steam for sure. And as I'm looking here at, at the train sets you have displayed, I see that some of them already come with uh, a, a DCC command station Included, so it's also a great way, not only to get started in the hobby, but to get started right into DCC from the outset, and not have to go through all the learning curve of starting in DC and learning learning how to convert to DCC. Absolutely, yeah. So we have our digital commander set um, that actually comes with two locomotives, so you can experience what it's like to operate DCC and not have to be bound by. The controller, you're bound by the the actual control of the locomotive itself. Right, to do um, two trains at once and all that fun stuff. Exactly, and that comes with a siding, so you can get a little taste of what it's like and hopefully, you know, want to expand from there. Uh, right. We also have a couple of sound sets, too. We have the Thunder Chief from the Echo Valley Express in HO. Um, that's a, they're a, a diesel and a steam set. They just come with one train each, 
uh, but they come with sound. Um, and as far as I'm aware, these are the only full train sets available in HO scale with, that come with, with DCC, with DCC and, and sound. sound. Exactly. Okay. So you've got you've got a number of different sets here, different price points, different features, and and so it's really the full scope of, of what somebody might want to get into or what somebody might want to get for their child or, or whatever, you know, to, to test the waters or, or whatever. So that's great. That's great. So where can where can uh, people go if they want to find out more about Bachman Trains? What is your uh, what's your website? So our website is www.bachmantrains.com. Um, we're actually uh, on the cusp of uh, completely overhauling our website. We've got a, uh, a new one that's about ready to launch. It's probably going to be launched in the next few weeks. Um, that's going to bring our shop and our, web and our website together into one site, which is going to make it really easy for the customer to browse all of our products, see what we have in stock, see what's coming in. Um, but we also encourage you to check out the retailers. Um, mm -hmm. There's a lot of great retailers out there that have our stuff. Um, and uh, yeah, that, that, that's, okay, that's so my people, recommendation. People can order online from, from your website, but Certainly, we do want to encourage people to, to visit their local hobby shops and, and support them also. Exactly, yeah. Okay, well, this is great. Well, Matt, uh, you know, appreciate your time and, you know, glad to see that, that Bachman continues to thrive and, and expand. And uh, I'm going to have to check out that uh, Elf on the Shelf set for, uh, for my grandkids. So, thanks a lot. Appreciate it. Wish you much success. All right, thank you. Thanks. Okay, I'm here with Jim Wigan of Athern Trains. Jim, um, Athern is obviously a, a very well-known name in the hobby. I know there's many of us that <clears throat> cut our teeth on, on blue box kits, yeah. but uh, we've kind of moved out of that era now. What's new with Athern? We have got a lot of things going on. Our production, our uh, product developers have been working overtime on not just new models, but updating older models. What you're looking at right now, the SW1500s, they've now been upgraded to have sound and lighting, including gr uh, ground lights on these guys. Oh, okay. So a lot more detail. I know we can't see it because we're on audio only, but look at the cab interior of these guys. Yep. Just I begging much for... More, yeah. Much finer. Uh, yeah, definitely a, a different level of detail than the original run uh, that came out, for sure. A lot more lighting features, which is what folks are asking for. Mm -hmm. They want those lighting features. So the beacons, in some cases, uh, depending on the prototype, we're going to follow those lighting features. So in the case of this BNSF that we're looking at, we've got that strobe light up there. Right. And yeah. that all, uh, these come with a, a decoder equipped or? You can get them either or. You can get them with uh, the uh, Economy or you can get them DCC ready with a 21 pin connector. Okay. So the modeler can put in their own. Absolutely. Um, all right. Well, with a, with a detailed cab like that, where would you where would you mount a speaker if you were looking to put sound in that? So the speakers in these are actually in the front of the locomotive. Okay. So, and the thing that I want to let everybody know, I have a very small enclosure for my layout. The speaker quality in these is amazing. I've turned it down 60%. That's how loud it is wow. from okay. the factory. So despite their size, they've actually got a really great sound system. Okay. Without being distorted. Okay, and now are these available now, or are these are these? These are available right now. They just just became available. Okay. Okay. Well, what else? What uh, so we've got we're some other some, things that some are more just, locos. Yep. For our, continuing with the HO, we've got the uh, SD fifty nine M dash twos. These were the remanufactured by Union Pacific uh, former SD sixty Ms. Okay. Lots of new tooling on these. These have got the Genesis treatment, of course, so they are available with or without the Tsunami 2 decoder, sound decoder. They're going to have all the lighting features that our customers demand, such as the number boards, the ground lights, things of that nature. And then for our end scale guys, we've got another run of the Challengers. Okay. These are just um, hitting the hobby shop shelves right now. Impressive. That's a big locomotive in end. That's about it's, that's about as long as an HO scale locomotive. Exactly. Yes. Yep. And those very very popular. Of course, those can be equipped. You can purchase those with or without sound. I highly suggest the sound. Right. There's something about the compound sound of that locomotive that just really really nice. Yep. And then let's see. We've got something a little bit more fun for some guys. We got our rotary snow plows. This is under the Atherin line. 
We've got a powered F7B that is uh, decoder ready. Okay. And then we've got the rotary itself, and there's a motor in there so that the so rotary actually So the blades actually, actually turn? Yes. Oh, that's great. Yep. And then... Have you, have you tried it with actual HO scale snow? Will it actually throw snow? We have it. It depends on the snow. If it's a heavy Canadian snow, it takes a little bit more heft. If it's a Midwestern dusty snow, it's a little easier. <laughs> All kidding aside, uh, no, we haven't actually done that. But uh, we have heard of stories of hobby shops in the past using some form of... Uh, scenic material that mimics snow to right. push that around yeah and it's it's interesting we were um we just had some snow last weekend in pennsylvania where i live and my wife was asking what what the trains do when there's snow right and i said well most of the time they just move it out of the way but you know out out west where you get really deep snow they have actual plows that are basically like a snow blower for the rails so absolutely very, very cool to see that you've got one that actually uh, has the, the play value of a motor that, you know, those blades are going to spin. And if someone really wanted to go that route, they could probably find a way to uh, have it throw actual snow. Absolutely. <laughs> Let me show you stuff that is just going to be hitting uh, hobby shop shelves soon. So we'll start over here. First, we've got the concession stand caboose. This is uh, a lot of new tooling. What's really cool about this is how many times you've been going somewhere and you've seen these road signs. Oh, the signs. little with the arrow and the little changeable letters. Yes. And, yep. So we're going to be offering that with the concession stand caboose. That's going to have LED lighting in it. And oh, it's also wow. going to have the JST style plug. So it will work with the Woodland Scenics just with plug. The just plug system. Absolutely. <clears throat> the other way um, that we've engineered it is the wires are hidden so that it just neatly can be mounted to your layout or your module. And you won't see right those in, wires. You won't see the wires. Exactly. The much-anticipated AC4400s that you see here, mm -hmm. these will be here in a, very shortly. We're talking probably uh, late February, early, early okay. March. These are actually the last samples that uh, John checked off on, so these are good to go. Right. And... Remember the U50? We've had yes. that in our lineup for quite yep. a while. This thing has been lots of lots of work's been put into this. A mm -hmm. lot more detail, basically bringing it up to a Genesis 2 status. Right. So your lighting features, and it's currently our heaviest locomotive. I mean, this thing will, it's a stump puller. Right. Our Dash 9s <laughs> used to be the heaviest and best pullers. John told me that on his club layout, he took two Dash 9s running in the opposite direction and this one locomotive pulled them across the whole layout without wow. any issues. Wow. So, now, what, what radius will that operate on? Believe it or not, that will still run on an 18-inch radius. Really? Yes. Because this thing, just for those of you listening, this thing's almost a foot long, and it's got it's a U50. It's got four two-axle trucks on it, so it's, 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 a, it's a beast. It so. is absolutely a beast. Now, does it... It would look toyish on an 18, but if you really right. wanted to, you could run it on an 18. Right. And if you remember last year, we talked about uh, the Roundhouse F units. Mm -hmm. There was a lot of work put in it. There's a, uh, a sample that we've just signed off on, so you can kind of see the refined looks of that. Right. Don't forget, for all your uh, fans out there that still like to play with an airbrush, we did do those in undecorated as well. Oh, okay. So those will be hitting the uh, uh, shelves here real short. <laughs> That's nice. I mean, undecorated models are becoming harder and harder Absolutely. to find. So yes. yep. for those people that model a, a specific prototype that you can't get ready to run, it's great that, that you're doing that. We've got the Amtrak uh, P42 here, the 50 years uh, special commemorative paint job. Mm -hmm. Those are on the water now. These will be hitting uh, store shelves in a couple of weeks. Okay. So, so you guys went for Amtrak. Right on the cusp of a whole influx of, of new products. Absolutely. What about what about rolling stock, Jim? Rolling stock. We've got a lot going on for rolling stock as well. I don't have any of the new samples here or the FMCs that we've been working on. Okay. But uh, a lot of the older tooling that went back to the days of the MDC, mm -hmm. uh, that has all been redone. So now it's dimensionally correct. And we're actually uh, matching the door type based on the uh, railroad that bought them. Proto so, prototype specific prototype, exactly. doors. Okay. Yep. The biggest news that we've got from the weekend, though, is 
You remember back at the National Train Show, we did a soft announcement on the CA-11 cabooses? Yes, yes. We have formally announced them as of yesterday, Friday. Okay. We have got uh, CA-11s in Union Pacific, as well as some other short lines, uh, like the Oneida and Western, Mm -hmm. and the Idaho, Northern, and Pacific, I believe. Those are out uh, for announcement now, too. So that's big news. That's all brand new tooling from the ground up. Okay, and so those are available now or will be, or they're They're in available for pre-order. Okay, for pre-order. Yep. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. All right, well, what's the... I'm going to give you the, the hardball question here. What's the biggest thing that you would like the audience to know about Athern Trains? What, what sets you apart from all the other manufacturers out there? Yeah, that's a good question. I would say that one of the things I like to tell folks is... 90% of the Athern team is modelers. Um, our product developer, John Stackpole, has a, many, many years in the hobby. His father runs a hobby shop, so he has a pulse on the retail side of things. Okay. Uh, Janik, another one of our uh, product developers, he is a very active in the Fremo as well as the Rail fan community. Okay. And then myself, I'm active mainly in N-Scale, but I also do HO as well. I've been modeling for over 35 years. We have a passion for the hobby. That being said, though, we are a business, so that doesn't mean that if we only have one suggestion for one railroad, we're not necessarily going to make it. Right. But at that, but we do want to know that we want to hear from our customers. And a lot of the things that you see here today, like the Ohio uh, Central SD40T-2s, was because of customers reaching out to us through our product suggestion email. And we produce those, and we sold out of them. They're hard to get now. So if people do have a suggestion or an idea for something that they'd like to see produced, obviously it's not always a guarantee, but you do take input. Absolutely. And that's, that's a link on your website? or it's a, it's a link on our website, and it's also real simple. It's athern-productsuggestions at athern.com. So the website is just athern.com? Athern.com, correct. Okay. And do you have a Facebook presence as well? Absolutely. We, were, we are currently on Facebook, Instagram, uh, Twitter, or now called X. And we also have our YouTube channel. We have uh, TikTok. And okay. on, yes, and we have TikTok now. And on our YouTube channel, we have Train Tuesday, where I bring you information every Tuesday at 7, 7 o'clock Central Time. Okay. And we also do a monthly uh, YouTube video called the Athern Extra, where we have experts in the industry, both the model and the prototype, come on board and talk to us about model railroading. Okay, so the best way to catch all that is to go to go to the YouTube channel and then subscribe so that you get all the updates. And that's uh, Athern Trains on YouTube? On or? YouTube, yeah. Okay. All right. Well, Jim, thank you so much for your time showing us around the booth and um, you know showing us all the stuff that Athern... Uh, is going to have coming out in the very uh, near future for modelers. We really appreciate it. All right. Thank you, Tom. Thanks. All right, I'm here with David Lelbach of Tangent Scale Models. Uh, Dave, what's what's new with Tangent these days? Well, thanks for coming on over here, Tom. Uh, well, there's a lot new at Tangent here. As always, we are releasing new stuff every month. That's what we do. And uh, this month, we actually have the second release of the month for uh, Bessemer and Lake Erie coal hoppers here. These Bessemer and Lake Erie coal hoppers were built by Pullman Standard in 1975. We've got them in two paint schemes. They're original uh, Core 10 steel built cars that have, they're basically an unpainted steel side with black stripes that have all the lettering on them. And then also the Bicentennial 1776 car. We got these uh, coal hoppers in a 24 pack. So you can have a whole train worth if you want them. One and whole train. One whole train. <laughs> and we did that so that, you know, modelers, you know, didn't have to wait for a second run, that kind of thing. Right. We're trying to, like, avoid some of that. So right. that's so how been many, our new thing. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. How many cars were actually uh, painted in the uh, the Bicentennial, the red, white, and blue scheme? Yeah, that's just the first car that Pullman produced. Uh, they painted up in Bicentennial. So uh, the balance of the fleet was in this other scheme here that's demonstrated okay, so here. You buy the 24-pack, you buy one of the red, white, and blue, and basically you're set. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We and thought these all that come the, with a load? Yes, they do. They come with a load that's in it that comes out, as you can see. Uh, we've uh, For those on Radio Land, you won't be able to see that, but right. the load does come out. You can look at that on the Tangent website. car is fully detailed, and it's uh, fully weighted and ready to run. Uh, our coal hoppers are actually NMRA weight. Um, so they're not light. Uh, they're actually weighted to be operable, whether they're a load or an empty. Right. Which is important because when they're empty, 
if your car's not weighted right, it's prone to derailment and things like that. So you, you want the right weight for sure. Exactly. And then, you know, Tangent excels at things like all our cars have real KD couplers and, uh, you know, all metal wheels, that kind of thing. So they're really made to run. Yep. Definitely uh, a plus for operations and things like that. So beyond the beyond the hoppers, what else? Uh, what else do you have? Uh, what else do you have here at the show? What else have you released recently? Yeah, we've released us. Uh, this is actually our third uh, of three um, quad hopper, uh, quad coal hoppers that we've released here in the past couple months. And the goal of this these releases is effectively um, to give us. Uh, some coverage to do some of these eastern coal hoppers correctly. Every one of them is different. We've done three completely different coal hoppers. Um, and then it, within the systems, there's also variations uh, within the system. So we've done a lot of investment and tooling to do these coal hoppers correctly. Okay. Uh, that's been our most recent stuff. Um, also, you know, we've, uh, you know, released just in the past few months these Burlington Northern and Northern Pacific cabooses, international wide vision cabooses from 1969 through 1972. Uh, BN and NP and SP and S. Uh, we've released those this year. But no Redding. No Redding. Uh, they look similar to the Redding, but not the same cupola. The Reddings were a little bit different in its design. Oh, okay. Uh, but down the road, that's definitely something we might endeavor to do. You never know. Uh, but yeah, we've got uh, that as new stuff. And then we've also released some covered hoppers this year recently. 4427 Pullmans, which are on the other side of the table behind me. Um, and you know, like I said, every month we're doing new stuff, Tom. So... You know, our goal is to give you guys and the modeler community, you know, a lot of stuff to look at. That's that's great. And I mean, I have several tangent cars on my layout. They look great. They run great. So, how what's the what's the approximate time from you coming up with a, a concept to the time it's actually available for purchase or on the shelf? Um, yeah. So, I mean, generally, our stuff takes. It's a cycle of something like two-ish years at best, sometimes longer. Okay. Um, it also depends on how much research and design uh, we need to do on the front end of that. So um, our R&D time, you know, when you count that is a lot because most of the time we're going out and measuring something. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we don't generally stick to plans. We actually like to put our hands on a real, on pro a real, on a real product that we can scale down. Um, you know, freight cars and cabooses benefit from from you know the same thing with locomotives where you have plans but a lot of the times the plans aren't quite what's actually produced so. right you don't know what the shop guys may have done when they got the plans exactly or, or what comes later on when this stuff is modified too there's a lot of modifications that happen later in life right and we model these cabooses all through their lives we offer them an original um, paint jobs but we also offer them um, with rebuilds and that kind of thing for mm -hmm. to, to show them later in life basically right Right. So, I know you just shared what you just released. What uh, can, is there anything you can share about what's coming down the pike, or is that <laughs> is that a big secret? Or that is a big secret, Tom. Because okay. as you know, or you may not know, but we don't pre-announce what we're doing next. So, what we announced today, these Bessemer coal hoppers, we just announced them today, and they came out today, and nobody knew about them before today. And that's our, that's the way we've done it since the beginning. We showed up at the National Train Show in Detroit with no pre-announcements at all in 2007. And we've done that every year since, every release since. We just don't pre-announce our products. So when you announce them, they're produced, they're out, they're ready for purchase. No no pre-ordering or anything like that. We don't we don't pre-order, we don't crowdsource our stuff to see if it's correct or not. We we put all the work in on the front end. Our stuff is is correct right out of the box. We, okay. we really try to push that here. We spend a lot of time in the R&D cycle which is uh, why it takes us a while to do things um, you know, longer than we want, honestly. But that's what happens. So. Right. But so. then you at least have, if, if you announce it, it's out there. Correct. Somebody if you announce it, it, it's out there. And honestly, you know, we, you know, the stuff that we've announced, the stuff that we haven't announced, there's a lot of stuff coming. So we're going to keep doing these monthly releases. So. Great. Yep. Great. So where can people go if they want to you know, stay current on what you're releasing or if they have questions or where yeah. can they? So, I mean, they can go to the Tangent website, www.tangentscalemodels.com. Okay. Um, you can also, like, read Model Railroad News Magazine, for instance, where there's mm -hmm. a lot of news about stuff. 
uh, done by Tony Cook, of course. And all you know, most of the magazines cover our new releases. All the magazines right. cover our new releases generally. Uh, the problem there is, you know, our stuff does sometimes sell out. Not always, but sometimes. So it's best to just keep watching our website once a month. We have a release. We also announce on places like the Atlas Forum and Train Orders, so people know what's what's new. So right. We, we try to reach them, and of course, we use the socials. Well, not Facebook, I Instagram. All I that. shouldn't actually say it that way. I just use one social mostly. Facebook is really all we use. We don't okay. really use Instagram. Um, we probably should, but we just are not that sophisticated with our marketing machine, um, right. which I know some other people have mentioned to us before. But you know, we seem to be doing okay. So uh, we know our market. Our market is catering to the older guys and the younger guys. But you know, a lot of those guys aren't on Insta. So whatever. Right. Right. Well, Dave, it, it's been great to see the, the success that you've had and, and how broadly the, the line has expanded over the years, you know, from different car types and everything. And I know you've got wheel sets and details and things like that. So uh, these cars look great. Um, you can really see the, dif you know, the difference in the coloring between the, the unpainted steel and the, and the painted panel. So definitely, um, you know, check those out for those of you listening at home on tangentscalemodels.com. And uh, Dave, we'll keep an eye on the website to see what else uh, you're going to be bringing out in the months to come. That'd be great. Thanks so much, Tom. I really appreciate the time. And thank you to the Modeler's Life listeners. Um, I just want to say I listen to the Modeler's Life uh, podcast, a Modeler's Life podcast uh, myself. Um, I'm a regular listener, and I've been interviewed by it by Lionel a couple times. So I really appreciate the opportunity to uh, speak with you guys today. Great. Thanks. Well, thank you, and continued success. All right. Thank you, Thanks. sir. Yep. Bye. Take care. Okay, Scooter, what, what did you think of that show? Perfect. It was probably one of the better out of all of them. Oh, so you do think Tom's interviews are better than mine? Well, I'm talking about the ones Tom did. Right. Yeah. <laughs> They're all Tom's interviews. You're not going to get me to say that. Well, you just said it. Those are all, They were all Tom's interviews, and we come back and we're uh, like 45. Yeah, but uh, I'm talking about all that was one of the better ones that Tom did. Oh, okay. Not one of the better ones, period. Here's a question. Here's a question. I can just see that shovel flailing. Oh, yeah. I yeah, was it not. It's going <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> here's, <laughs> here's, a, here's a question. Here's an interesting thought that I don't know if it's ever been done. I wonder if anybody's ever been, had a spike strip thrown across at the end of their driveway. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh. Uh, I know where this is going. <laughs> um. Okay. So who did we talk about? We talked about. Oh, yeah. So how did it go with David Leobach? Uh, that was a good conversation. Yeah, it was. We got to get him back on the show, like, for a full, full-blown full interview. There's a, We got to get everybody. I was pretty excited yeah. the other day. Uh, okay, so you were talking about interviewing uh, Matt Herman from 3D Central, and then I sent you a message saying, man, I'd like to do that with, uh, with you together. I think that whole 3D Central thing is... Yep. Yeah, definitely. Is is uh, really going to turn into something because, and I am only segueing into that because Tangent is on the three D Central uh, page. I'm not exactly sure how or, or how that works because it said it's partnered with Tangent, so I don't exactly understand how that works. So that's why we got to talk to Matt Herman about it. Okay. Anybody? How does it yeah, work? Definitely. Oh, how's it work? Uh, yeah. Apparently, well for it. They're still there. We need uh, we need uh, some we need contact info for Matt Herman because uh, I don't know if you go on their website if there's if there's any if there's any way other than just to send an email to uh, 3D Central. I'm very excited about 3D Central. I don't know why. I, I think the, I think the quicker way is to message their Facebook page rather than an email. Okay. Did you do that? That's how I first got in touch with them. Oh yeah, and what did he say? Um, well, I wasn't talking. I when I did that, I wasn't talking about interviewing him. This was a few months ago. I was talking ab about a potential project that I would like to do with them. <laughs> oh, and did they <laughs> and, did they answer fairly quickly? Yeah, they answered like within a day. Oh, okay. Well, I'll do that so, then. I'll send. Yeah, it. I think if I think if you message their Facebook page, I think you'll get a a response pretty quickly. And would you like to be part of that interview? Absolutely. All right. Who should we not invite as of the regular crew to be part of the internet? <laughs> Me. E everybody else. Everybody. <laughs> uh, All right. It's a done deal. It was just. It's just you and me, buddy. We'll interview him. I would mind. 
We might let we might let one or two of the other ones in. You know that male boy guy. He kind of he kind of is, is always there. Um. Yeah, I'm consistent at least. Yeah, you are. You show up on time and everything, and you're always in the head properly and things yeah, like that. Yeah. So here it is. Here's tangent scale models based in Asheville, North Carolina. Do you know where that is, uh, Scooter? I do. Just up the road from Greenville. Yep. And then when you get to Asheville, you're not too far from? Hello? Yeah, I'm waiting. When you get to Asheville, North Carolina, you're not too far from? Uh, Tangent? Bristol, Tennessee. <laughs> oh, yeah, that too. Yeah. <laughs> wow, I didn't know where that was going. Wow. <laughs> well, because one time I, with the time I passed through, uh, stopped to see you, I was on my way to Bristol, Tennessee. Yeah. And I went from Greenville to Nashville, and then I did a hard right and drove over to Bristol, Tennessee. Yeah, the nice. self-clearing Lionel, church truck. Well, that was nice of you to stop. It was. It was really nice of me to stop. I knew he'd be happy to have me there. You um, didn't drive on his lawn at that time, did you? What's that? That was the time you drove on his lawn, was it? That was the time I got stuck in his driveway. Oh, okay. Yeah. There yeah. yeah. Um. Uh, anyways, uh, do you remember what, uh, much about your interview with Tangent Scale Models, Queso? Um. I think the the main thing that I remember that being impressed by was was how many how many products they had in the pipeline and and how quickly they're pushing products out. Mm. Like they're they're a couple of years out with with stuff. Um so that I mean that's the main, again the, these were done a while ago and uh my head is fuzzy these days. So but I do remember being impressed at, at how many products they have and and how many he had in the pipeline that were going to be coming out over the next several months. Yeah, they were done. Uh, these interviews were done at the last weekend of February. No, last weekend January. of January. And this is so it was done about six or seven weeks ago. Yeah. I would have thought you would have made copious notes as you were interviewing each person. Well, oh, they had cards. I only have <laughs> I only have two hands. That's true. And one hand has to hold the mic. The other hand has to hold the little box thing. Yeah, that's and, true. And I was not given an assistant. Yeah, that's so. true. I was going to give you Kelly, but then I thought, well, there's no reason to be mean to you. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> but isn't that, that's something, that's a good piece of conversation to have right now while we're talking about uh, tangent scale models and, and some of the other ones and Bachman and Athern is like, all these guys are trying to pretend, you know, how do you make a, a small fortune in model railroad manufacturing and you start with a big fortune. And yet all of these manufacturers are turning out products faster than you can blink. Like they're, they're and good, and good quality products and too, good yeah. quality products. I, I like I, the hobby has to be growing like crazy because, Oh yeah. There, there's just so many. Are you, do you know yet, Bruce, if you're the, North America. I have not heard yet the date of recording <laughs> being uh, Pi Day, March the fourteenth. Uh, uh, I suspect by the beginning of next week or so, we may know because they had the the cutoff date for ballots, mail in ballots was March first. Had to be postmarked by. So, I imagine they have a a, a a few days to get those in, and then tabulation and all that stuff, and we'll find out. Uh how about a straw poll of everybody in the room other than the mailboy? Uh, Kelly, here's what I'm yeah. thinking. That as soon as we find out for sure if the mailboy is the North American director at large for the NMRA, I say we have him on and we just beat the living crap out of him. There you go. Get well, it we, definitely, we definitely should interview <laughs> yeah. him. We definitely should interview him and give him some real hard questions to answer. Okay. so you're Not right. softball. Not softball. But no, not nothing, nothing but hardball questions. Yeah. Um, so you're, a, you're, a, a, a voting yes. What about you, Queso? Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, Scooter? I don't know about that. That's kind of mean. <laughs> <laughs> thanks. Thanks, Scott. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's... Hey, hey, can't, can't stand the heat. Get out of the kitchen. There that's you go. Yeah. I mean, my God, <laughs> the guy just ran for a national 
Right. See, I mean, why you won't give him such a hard time? He's going to get a hard time. Well, exactly. So we, why not warm him up? Like you don't. Warm, see, yeah, uh, warm up. Yeah, yeah we can practice with us. Yeah, you uh, can okay. practice with us. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> After that, it'd be a piece of cake. Yeah, yeah, yeah really. Well, Bruce, I guess my vote doesn't count. So. Your vote counts. You're two. You're there's two four one opposed, and then I have a uh, vote, and I'm all for it. So that's three four one opposed. <laughs> 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 so your vote actually counted you're just in the minority your team loses it just didn't work <laughs> sorry bruce <laughs> now bruce when you are if you get a chance to if this all works out in your favor will you still be allowed to purchase products like uh rapido trains your fast track to model ordering fun rapido trains your fast track to model railroading fun like, I, I could purchase could purchase products from any manufacturer I want, but particularly Rapido are very nice products. I have a fair number of their products. Exactly. They are they are quality. They're quality products. But they so is tangent quality. tangent scale models. I've got a couple tangent things too. <clears throat> and we all have stuff we don't know. Uh, okay, so you and I got a <laughs> inter- stuff we don't need yet. Yeah. We got to interview Matt Herman. I'm like cranked about this. Yeah, I, I can tell. Well, when you when you interviewed him, that's the problem. Your interviews are so good. Um, when you interviewed him, like I was listening to this and I'm thinking, wow, this is interesting. This is interesting. I'm looking at the website and I'm like, man, these guys have really hit onto something. And of course, Matt's a, a go-getter kind of guy and he's going to make it work. So it'd just be a fun, fun story to talk about. Um, and then finally you talked to Matt, w- uh, Jim Wigan at Athern. Yes. Yes. I talked to Athern as well. And how did that go? It went well. Again, I'm I'm I apologize, uh, <laughs> loyal listeners. But like I said, this this was long enough ago that I really don't uh, I don't remember much of the details. And again, since I was not given an assistant where I could take notes, um, I just remember it being a good conversation. And I I love Ather, and I have a ton of their products. I have uh, I have products from most of the manufacturers on the Reading division. I try to spread the Spread the love around. You know what? You know, this is telling us, don't you, Kelly? What? He says he doesn't remember the interview, and the and the four of us just listened to it, and he didn't. Yeah, I know. We just listened to the interview, and obviously he went and did something else. He was on mute. Yeah, he was doing something else while we were playing the interviews and playing the he's show. With. Queso. Maybe yeah. he's working on it. Maybe he's working on the layout. No, he's pretty- eating queso. Um, yeah, see, yeah, just, I was trying to find a bus for Tomstock. Oh yeah, how's Tomstock going? Oh, there you go. Well, we have the we have the Bud car chartered. We have our itinerary for Friday. I just need to uh, I just need to find a bus. We kind of screwed that up, didn't we? We didn't work f- soon enough on the bus. Yeah, yeah, we didn't. That's on me. Well, um, me, me too. I could have helped. We've got the we've got the hotel room. We've got the uh, the banquet or the the meeting room for Saturday night for for Brad and those guys to um, set up their T track modules. And I have a very special surprise booked <gasps> for the picnic. Wow, cool. Mm. Well, and so does, does that mean I should get Carlton the Bear to come too? No, no, gritty, gritty, gritty is not gritty is not coming to the picnic. Oh. Maybe, maybe, maybe he got the polka king. Gritty wow. charges, gritty charges three thousand dollars an hour. Holy wow. moly! <laughs> wow, you think for that kind of money you get a better outfit? Yeah. <laughs> oh, geez. Oh, God. So no, we're not. We're we're not. Uh, we're not going to have gritty. <laughs> For, um but no there's there's a special surprise that the oscar have, meyer wienermobile no it it, oh. it is a vehicle but it is not the wienermobile oh no Ooh. the batmobile i'm not gonna say all right i want it to be a surprise we're about four months out so i want it to be a surprise Ooh. Mm. Ooh. Well, if you really want to surprise us get a bus <laughs> I'm working on it. Oh, hey, hey. The, the, the Jerry Britton Cheeseball Express isn't going to run itself. I, I know. Um, <laughs> hey, uh, Scooter, did you listen to the last Springfield report, Port Report number three? I did. Yeah, so we came. I came up with a great solution for this bus problem. Did you hear it? 
Yeah, I thought it was a great idea. So, what do you could you get your bus and then like leave all the stuff in your shed, and then we'll and then we'll get some seats installed and problem solved. Yeah, I could do that, but I'm not because <laughs> <laughs> okay. that would be a lot of work. Apparently, somebody's not a team player. Oh, I am a team player. You'd have to come help. <laughs> That's a lot of work, dude. Be careful what you ask for. Yeah. I got to yeah, ask. We just, well, we just get a bunch of folding chairs. What? Yeah, we don't need yeah. belt. <laughs> Why don't we just go rent an old Ford tractor and get a trailer and put some hay in it and call it a day? Yeah, there you go. Yeah, there you go. I got a I got a sinking feeling, and this is nobody's fault because I should I could have done something about the bus because Tom, you were dealing with some uh, stuff, <laughs> some family stuff, so I could have easily made that call. Uh, I'm beginning to get a sinking feeling we might be riding around in a school bus. <laughs> well, as long as it's a bus, it doesn't really matter what what kind of bus. Right. Well, I don't know. A school bus is a little bit of a long day. <laughs> it's a long yeah. day. Yeah. Especially if it's hot and there's no air conditioning. Yeah. We are not going to be riding in a school bus. I I do <laughs> not fail. I will get a bus for us. Okay. Um, there you go, Tom. That was the best attitude you could have for that's this. That's a great attitude. Thank you, Tom. We need yep. a team player like you in the lead. Yeah. Hey, say, Tom. Yes, sir. Are we going to give the boys that the uh, run in the bug cars a few buckets of cheese balls for their efforts? Absolutely. Last time, last time we gave him T-shirts. I think we'll have to up the ante and give him cheese balls. You know what we should. And cheese balls. You know what we should do is if we get ourselves organized, semi-organized, and this is not that much of a stretch because basically all we got to do is get Barb involved. Is we go. should have we should have T-shirts to give to them on the day of. Mm, yeah. yeah, to make it look like we well thought this out. Right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That they weren't that they weren't a convenient afterthought. Yeah. Right. Well, uh, while uh, David starts stuffing his face with uh, bar, b- butter tarts, we can be giving them out T-shirts. Right. There you go. The key, the key to getting that done is for you to remind me two or three times, and then we get Barb involved, and then I get an empty bin, and I put it in the office, and I say, Barb, this has got to go to uh, Tom Stock. This has got to go to Tom Stock. And then she gets the sh- stuff, <laughs> the stuff in the bin, and, uh, and then like, as I'm, she's like, then she just pesters me for a week. Is it in your car yet? Is it in your car yet? And then I said, you know what? Put it in the car and it's right. in the, and it's in there. So that's how we always manage to do Springfield so well. I make a list, I give her the list and then I tell her, we got to get all this stuff in the car before I leave. And then the very last thing she does is on the morning that I leave, she shows up with all the cookies and butter tarts. So I should just really just work with Barb directly. I would if I was sure. Okay, I can do that. Um, can you at least can you at least do me the courtesy of letting her know that I'll be reaching out to her so that she doesn't think I'm just some crackhead? <laughs> yeah, I can do that. <laughs> yeah, there's that some guy on the phone warning me. Random, some <laughs> there's some random dude talking about Tomstock. Well, yeah, and what the hell is Tomstock? <laughs> yeah, she knows what it is. Um, oh, okay. Uh, what I'll do is I'll give you her phone number, then you can just text her directly. However you want to do it. I actually, I think I'm friends with Barb on Facebook. There you go. There you go. Well, who yes, I am. Who isn't friends with Barb on Facebook? Everybody's friends with Barb. All right. I am looking forward to Tom Stock. So we got your Wednesday night dinner at the Shady Maple. Is that what it's called? What's it called? Yep. Shady Maple. Shady Maple. Uh, that we should take a school bus to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that would be fun to take a school bus to that. A short one. A short one. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> Yeah. A lot of people actually take bus. I mean, that's actually a very popular bus destination. Yeah. yeah. We can just borrow one of those buses. Well, if we got a highway, if we rented a highway bus for that job, that would cost probably six, seven hundred bucks. Be, that would be a damn expensive. Dinner. Yeah, exactly. But I'm thinking if we rented a school bus, we might, we might get away with three, four hundred bucks for that job. And then, and then everybody might be there at the same time. Yeah, exactly. Um, the bus would still leave late because of me though. Um, because I dawdle. You know what the problem is? I dawdle. I'm a dawdler. That's the problem. I'm a dawdler. I, I, you know, like I'm driving along and I'm like, you know, when I'm on the road and I'm, and I'm actually, if I'm by myself and I'm having a nice drive and I'm actually on the road with my foot on the gas pedal, I'm making great time. 
I'm probably making as good a time as anybody. But then I'll be going down the road. I've been on the road for an hour or two. And then I'll pull into a Loves to get some gas and a soda. And then as I'm pulling out, I'll see a set of railway tracks. And then I'll think to myself, oh, I wonder where they go. And then you see them and they're, they're, they're well-worn railway tracks. And you think, I wonder where they go. And then I dawdle on down there for, you know, only 15 or 20 minutes. But then that starts putting a crimp in your your eventual arrival time. Right. That's the problem. I did that today. What happens? I'm not <laughs> sure what I'm going to do. I have a dilemma with Tom Stock. Oh, my God. No, oh, no. Mm -hmm. All right. What's your dilemma? You didn't okay the date with me. Uh, you are always having something to do. Well, no, I have that Eskel convention. What should I do? Go to Tomstock. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's not a, well, that's... you should go to, you You need to go to Tomstock because that's when you're going to deliver the station. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. We're going to have the grand yeah, unveiling exactly. of the station, and that's HO scale, So not, and it's not S scale. So Excuse me, why bother scale. with the S scale? The, the, station, the station's N scale. Uh, let me let me. My, uh, we're we're talking about my station, Bruce. Oh, your station. Brad's. Well, yeah. there's not a whole in hell that's gonna be done by Thompson. <laughs> yeah, really. Yeah, how are you coming with Brad's station? I'm really getting close with it. I've gotten to... through doing over stuff. It was supposed to be done months ago. I know. I know. Hey, hey, Scott, you don't have to go to the the convention because we're going to call ahead and let them know that you're if you're coming he they, yeah. don't, they don't want you to be in the contest so yeah you're just doing it you'll yeah. be doing people a favor by not going. yeah let somebody else win <laughs> <laughs> it would be some uh, poor, you know, think of it this way some poor guy is building the model right now thinking yeah. about entering it in the s scale uh, uh and he's almost won the contest he's finished third once or twice and he's thinking this time i'm really going to try hard to, uh, to win this contest if you don't go, you're gonna let the, the guy's gonna win. If you go, you're gonna crush somebody's dream. Yeah, so I probably just <laughs> I probably need to just stay out of it, right? Uh, think to yourself, are you gonna have more fun riding on an RDC with all your AML friends, or are you gonna have more fun at an S scale convention that you Oh, I know what's more fun, but the problem is I have my buddy that passed away. I don't know. I gotta get I gotta unload a lot of his stuff, and that's one of the ways to do it. For a minute there, that scared the crap out of me. Yeah, I got my, I, thought, I was thinking of a weekend at Bernie's there for a minute. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my buddy passed away, but I promised him we'd go to this yeah. year's yeah. scale convention. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's going by God if he wants to or not. Yeah, I hope they're not towing him behind a boat and he's bouncing off some booze. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, God. Well, okay, let me ask you this question, Scott. I think it's the weekend before, so I'll be up there for a solid week. So I'll, I'll be good. Uh, let me ask you this question, uh, Scott. Mm -hmm. When you're selling your buddy's S-scale stuff, does he have any Rapido trains? Your fast track to model roading fun. If it's L, if it's H-O, the fast track is Rapido. Uh, Kelly, give out our email address. Yeah, if you want to reach us for the magic of email, you can reach us at modelerslife at gmail.com. That's modeler with one L like Lister. Not two L's like Lionel. Or Asheville. Ooh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah the, the S Gage National Convention is July 17th to the 20th. And Tom Stock is the, the 24th to the 28th. So, so just, just stay up there. Just stay up here. You've got a bus. Yeah, we can just hang out and have a good old time. You yeah, you stay park over. in the field behind Tom. You place. can, yeah. you can, you can yeah. come here early, and you can take Kelly's spot in the in the vacuum. Patrol. Vacuuming. Oh wow, that's what I've always wanted to do. Okay, well, there we go. <laughs> Sold. Sold. Yep. Uh, good idea. Uh, so, uh, Kelly, you sound like when you were giving it out, you. Okay, if you want to email us, it's a, you know uh, I had a I had a problem with it. I just couldn't come up with yeah. With but you a, gotta put your you gotta pretend you I care. Put, oh, I do care. I do okay. care. Okay. Well, your voice always lowers, and then it's like if Plus, you want to email. I just I just got back from from my chiropractor. Well, finally. okay, but I can hear you perfectly now. You you know what? My wife what? told me. I don't know. I think I was about forty five years old, somewhere in my mid to late forties. And she said something to me one day. I mean, she said a lot of things to me, like, you're an idiot. 
<laughs> well, that's one particular thing you remember. Yeah. <laughs> so she says to me, or we were somewhere, and she says to me, you know, whenever you introduce yourself, your voice goes down and and gets quieter when you say your name. And I went, what? She says, well, I know you've always, you know, Lionel's a different name, and Strang is a different name. And she says, I've noticed whenever we're doing something and you introduce yourself, your voice gets quieter when you say Lionel Strang. And I'm like, really? And, you know, I'd, of course, I'd never noticed it. And she said, yeah. And ever since that, and that's what you do, Kelly. When you go to do the email address, you go, okay, our email address is modelerslife at gmail.com. That's modelers with one L. <laughs> I will try to improve that. Oh, yeah. There. Just, it's your enthusiasm is infectious. Lacking. It's lacking in that case. <laughs> yeah, well, not particular. But in, it's infectious. Like, I think mm. I've got it as a rash on my arm. Uh, okay, so we gave out our email address, and if you missed that, you click on the picture of the moderately agitated male boy in a particular agitated state, and automatically your email, your email will be filled in. Our email address will be filled in, and all you got to do is put in your text and send us off the email. And, and where do you find that picture of me in a moderately agitated state? And that picture is on our website, amodelerslife.com. And I understand the email's Modeler's Life and the website's A Modeler's Life. It's a, don't ask, it's, it's a long story. And the, and when you click on the picture of the moderately agitated male boy, you may be clicking on the North American director at large for the NMRA, who will wow. have recently had the crap kicked out of him by his very fr favorite friends from the AML Network on a podcast. <laughs> in a loving way, in order yes. to help him be a better... Yeah, just give me a date so I can book the chiropractor. Yeah. Lionel, what? why does one of them have a modeler's life and the other one does not? <laughs> it's a long story. Long story. I know that, but why? Because I thought it Sorry, was... Sorry, folks, we ran out, we're of, out time. of time. We're out of time. Apologies to Matt Damon. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh, boy. And uh, let's see what else. Oh, yeah, if you want to... Uh, hey, Kelly, have you ever wanted a t-shirt with a hot dog on it? Oh, yeah. Oh, definitely. Well, if you go... Oh, to, that was good, Kelly. Uh, yeah, that was good. Now we're getting... Where, where can I get a hot dog shirt? Uh, if you go to uh, Midwest Model Railroad, and their URL is midwestmodelrr.com, and you scroll across the menu bar to other and click on the drop down menu, you'll see the AML shop and boom, you're in a wonderland of AML merch merchandise, hats, hoodies, mugs, t-shirts. And in there, you'll find a t-shirt with a hot dog on it. Hmm. Fastest the shipping in the hobby. And there's also a link. If you scroll farther down the website, there's also a link of uh, a picture of me behind a desk and somebody on a couch. Or a couch, me and a desk and a couch. What else do we got to say, uh, mailboy? Uh, you pretty much got it there. Oh, yeah. If you enjoy oh, this. Patreon, Patreon, yes. Yeah, yes, if yes, you yes. enjoy this particular podcast, you like twice as much podcasting every week, you click on the Patreon uh, link, and boom, for just a few cents a day, you can have twice as much podcasting every week. And if you join the higher level, every year you get a uh, – t-shirt that's only for patreon members and you get to enter the contest of hey dude where's my shirt <laughs> <laughs> which is I'd be like that <laughs> which is sweeping the nation that's the new contest that's sweeping the nation <laughs> that is so funny <laughs> um that's it i think we're done now are we hmm. i think so uh okay, so are you okay. ready i'm ready so remember, remember, a Modeler's Life podcast is considered marginally adequate by six out of ten charter bus company owners. Okay. You said that pretty fast, though. Char yeah. uh, Kelly, give an example of how we should have said it. Charter bus owners. And a light's The day I left Standing on the road Trying to hitch a ride To San Francisco Got to do the things I got to do And the lights oh. Transfer.
transportation for AML guests provided by Diamond Limousine. Diamond Limousine, where all of our vehicles are true diamonds in the rough. It's another Lincoln Homer. Wow, this is very confusing. You want to try again, Queso? Not particularly. Well, feel like it's like you're you're it's <laughs> it, it's a crescendo in the movie. It's a turning yeah, point got... in the plot line of the movie. He sounded like he was on hold to a bus company. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I can't do better than that. We're stopping now. <laughs> <laughs>